for turn three in this Fields of Fire teach and play. So without further ado, we'll just get right back into the action. So now we're on a turn three. So do we have a higher HQ event? Exactly. We no, do. We so this is again, this is in the mission. This is a mission specific. So draw a D10. It is mission specific. It is mission specific. So a two. So a two. So we go over here to this friendly higher HQ events. Bomb trouble must spend two commands to reestablish communications with battalion. We earn an extra experience point for each of these events that completed that turn. I don't know that we're going to want to do that because, man, like, we need our command points. Depends on how many we get, right? Sorry. So so how do you remember that? So, other than just write it down somewhere. Yeah, I mean, write it down somewhere is the main thing. If you go onto the Google Sheet, they actually have a nice thing here where you can record the friendly and enemy HQ events per okay. turn. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do that for now. If we're playing for real, we'll do it because, like, you can get yep. XP, but for the teaching purposes, no. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to get super aggressive so we can hopefully trigger some of this stuff to like come after us here. Um, I probably wouldn't do this normally, but we're going to get really aggressive uh, this turn uh, so that we, because we're running out of time a little bit here. All right, so we're drawing for our company commander, right? Company commander. There you go. So no, we three. get all four because all there's four, no, cause no contact. No again. contact, yep. right? So that's yeah. quite good. So I think with that, we should activate all of our platoons and yep. save one command. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so, draw, so go ahead, one. draw for platoon one and tell me what we get. Oh, all baby, right. here we go. Now we're, now we're cooking. Platoon two, three. That's still good. Reshuffle. Don't re yeah, draw again, then reshuffle. Four. Four. So that was good. That was very good. All right, so let's go left to right here. So I think left going left to right, I think what we should do is push the first platoon forward and push and then push this guy forward. Into the open field? No, into the woods, I think. I think we skip the open field. Don't you? Oh yeah. So we so first platoon is so that's gonna cost us three. I'm gonna go mark all three of them off. Yeah. First platoon costs but, three. But this guy is moving. So we're gonna move the entire platoon into the village. Well, first so doing it order of operations, yeah. first platoon moves into the village first. He has to move because the other guy can't move. Until he's there. Correct. And now he can tell him to go here. And now he can tell him to go there. And so now we and nobody just, can tell this guy to go anywhere, right? Nobody now. can tell. No, he's complete. He's out of command. So we're just gonna grab exposed markers. Yep. Probably won't matter for the platoon, but it matters. All right. So then second platoon, I think, and then we'll just let's see. That was like first platoon. platoon. I'd be moving over here. So then first platoon. There's first platoon here. So he has two left, but I think we should. Oh, actually, first platoon has. So first platoon can only save three commands because he's green. You see that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So he's currently at two. Trust me, he's under there. Um, and so we so would we lose him. one more anyway. So we should just seek cover. We should just try to find cover in the village. Yep. So we're drawing four cards to find cover in the village. So oh, draw reshuffle. One more. No cover. Nope. No joy. This would be a good card, by the way, though, to find cover on, because then we can get up into that second story, and then we've right. got then we we're sort of got a really commanding view of the the entire battle. So you have to be in cover to get to that second story? Yeah, you have to find that cover to get to that second story. Got it. All right, that makes sense. Okay, so with that... Right, so we're doing the saving three for him. Yeah, so he has finished his activation. That's the first sergeant. Just... Oh. No problem. First platoon is down there at the bottom. Yep. So he's got three now. 
So the second platoon has three and needs to spend them all. So because, or he can't, he needs to spend at least three. So I think we just mirror that, right? He's going to move forward. Right. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's rethink this for a second. That's a little bit dangerous because this, I mean, we know they've got the, we could end up getting like blasted here. Yeah, that's how it's either here or here. Feels yeah. Like a place to go. So I'm actually thinking we should. I'm actually thinking we should go here. Yes, that's where I had thrown out earlier. So that's now these and guys we should look for cover. Yeah. So he's gonna. We're gonna mark him. Wait, do we need to spend three with him? Yeah, we need to spend all three. We need to spend all three, and then actually, um, I think we should try spotting, not 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 seeking cover. Okay. So I think we should try spotting this guy. So modifier is it the same thing? It's the same thing. We're drawing We're one. Drawn. So we can spend one of our save commands to exhort, and I kind of think we should because I don't want to leave him right. on the map. You're gonna spend it? Yep. No joy. Okay, so. It's hard to find. So second, guess. second platoon is down to two saved commands. And then finally, third platoon. Third platoon has how many saved? They have... He also has two? I think he also has two saved. So he needs to spend three of these. At least, yep. So now my question boils down to, do you attempt to spot? We, we definitely attempt to spot first, I think. Right, because we're and you can actually exhort. Yeah, so if let's need to. if we need to. Yep, yeah. we're gonna attempt to spot. Nope. And then we're gonna exhort. Oh lord, nope. this four observer is no good. Well, now we could mm -hmm. just push somebody could forward. In. That's what I. That's what I think we should do. Is we should send one of these guys forward. Yep. So I think. Um, Let's see, maybe we send the, um, maybe send one of our full squads forward. So maybe the second, the second platoon. That works. And we mark him exposed. So that was our, that was our third command. So we got one left and then um, we might as well. We don't have to use it. We could, could save, save it. it. Or we could seek cover. That would seem smart to me. I think we should seek cover. We got no cover on the board, pretty much. So yeah. let's, let's let's see if we can find that village cover. Come on, oh, the village cover. Yeah. So it's the oh no, this guy's remember this guy's this guy's out of command. Oh, god, yeah. I'm gonna have to remember that. No, I did not remember that. <laughs> it just it seems like if you ask a squad to go forward, they'll naturally look for cover. Well, they, that's they, that's they, what that's what the general initiative is for. Oh, okay. Is 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 them going forward and on their own doing it? Oh, Lord. my goodness! All right, all right. So that's he is now finished. So EXO and First Sergeant, I think, are gonna just keep saving commands. They're limited to three as well. Oh no! Well, the First Sergeant is. The XO is limited to three. The first sergeant is limited to six. I like, by the way, I, I I confess, I also I really like just narratively. I like the fact that it's like the, the sergeant is the one grizzled leader. <laughs> it's like it works very yep. narratively. It works very well. All right. I don't know what you're talking about. So now, general, right? general, general. Yeah, we could use a high number here again. Oh, you beauty. Okay. Now we got a number of good things that we can do with that. First things first, I think we should try to spot with these with these guys. Okay. We got to get it eventually, right? Theoretically. Hey! There we go. Now. All right. So, that takes that off the board. So, now I'll talk about I'll talk about this. So, now this is where basically everyone opens up. So, let's let's take this guy off the map for a second just to to talk about. So, if this guy wasn't on that card, right? Yep. What would happen is this card and this card would open fire on the hedgerow. 
Okay, because now they're, they're suddenly like, holy crap, there's a guy there. Yep, yep. Um, and so what we because would Because we do, have troops there. Yes. And so what we would end up doing is we would end up putting a direction of fire marker here and here, pointing yep. into that. Um, and then we would find the highest volume of fire on any one of the units that's firing. And we would put it on that car. And that's a really key concept. Like, even though we might have seven people firing at that guard, you it's the highest one is the only one you worry about. Okay. But now, because we have a unit on the, we're not stupid enough to open fire on our own troops. Thank God. So, no, so the only people who open fire are the two people who are on the, on the card. So this guy has a volume of fire of S. So grab one of those. And when, when fire's on the card together, usually you put like the yours up there and the Germans down here. But he's not actually putting out any volume of fire. So where where is that marker? Oh, sorry. If you go over here, you can see volume of fire small arms is right there. Got it. Yep. So we're going to put that there. So now that tells us that we have got small arms volume of fire on it. Yep. Okay. So the good news is I'm hoping that... Somewhere in the rules, now that he's spotted, he's going to run away, uh, which means we're not going to have to worry about artillery this turn. So now I think we should try to seek cover with this guy. So, okay, so moving on, I think, so we've got three left, three general initiative left. So I think we want to seek cover here and seek cover here. Yeah. All right. We doing that? That's what I think we're doing. Yep. Which one first? Um, let's let's just stick on this card. So we're drawing right. four cards, we're looking for cover. So we did find cover. No, no, we, we did, did right cover. there. Yep, yep, yep. I see it. So that's good. Yep. So we are all right. Found cover. So now, now we're doing a cover over there. Yep. Now he's got four. Find cover. Woo. Well, at least cover. you. Yeah, we found cover, and you also drew a couple of contacts out of the out of the deck, which is good. Okay. So we have one left, and I think with that one left, we should do something about this guy. And what I think we should do paralyzed. about I think we move the paralyzed unit. And what I think we do is we move the paralyzed unit here where like the C where the CO is and the CO could start trying to like rally him if rally. they wanted to. Okay. And I think with that, that's, that's Just to it. make sure I understand. We could have used that general command and he could have gone up there. Yes, we could have. But again, I, you don't really want to put too many folks on cards until you know what you're dealing with. Oh yeah. 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 yeah so now so we got to look now we're checking contact. Um, or no? No. Yeah. No, because that's the end of our general initiative. So now we're going to see. Oh, if now he we got gets the enemy. A, he gets a higher IQ, of, a higher yep. HQ event. Nope. Which he did not. Now we're checking. Now the question is, what's he going to do? Yeah. So give me a second here. I'm going to want to look at this. So basically, the fact that he's keep... yeah, the fact that he's under fire, he's not going to do anything. So I think he's going to see that. So uh, sorry. What it says is is um, he 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 follows their own rules as described below. If pinned or reduced to an LAT, they'll then follow that. But he's not pinned. He's not a, and he's not a limited action. He hasn't taken a casualty. So basically, he's gonna just follow this this nice. sequence again. Yes. So let's see. Wait. wait, wait, wait. Okay, so basically he's gonna just we're gonna stop at one, and he's gonna try to place it in that same card again. So we're drawing three cards to see if he puts a so we're draw pending fire mission. Well, actually, let's draw these first and see. Why is, why is it? Why is he trying to hit that hex? Out of curiosity. Cause, cause, well, so so narratively, what I would and, say is well, it's ironic. I called it a hex. But. Yeah, fair enough. So I think <laughs> I think narratively the reason is is that. When, when you get these incoming fires on the potential contact, it's because they zeroed it in. 
So essentially, he's just he's he's continuing to call fire into the area that they've zeroed in, and he doesn't switch until that's no longer effective. Well, that was brilliant. That was absolutely perfect. So he doesn't doesn't succeed. So, and I think we're going to be able to chase him off the map if not outright kill him this turn. Okay. So now that's everybody of theirs who's on the map. Oh, I should note, we now are up to contact because there is a volume of fire marker on the map. Right. Um, as well as an enemy unit. So now we're drawn for potential contact. So we've got two hexes we have to draw. So first things first, we draw a random number, one to two, to decide whether we're... Which hex we're doing? Yep. So we're going to do this guy, this hex. Okay. And where is that card? Or that... Oh, it is a, it's it right. It's a B. It's an A. Or A. And it will contact. So we're drawing, we're only drawing seven cards. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see, like, as you move up the board, it gets, it gets, like, this middle row, it gets very likely. I believe we got contact. Yeah, so just draw seven cards at this point, and we got contact. Two of them. That is seven cards, yep. Yep. All right. So, so now we got to figure out what. So draw 10, D10. Five. That's nice. That's right in the middle. I like that. So, but this time we're going to use the potential contact A. Defensive position plus. That doesn't sound good, does it? So we go to the 10 lot row up here. So we place. Squad. Well, we get to figure out the one I asked about earlier. Yeah. On adjacent cars. Hang on, I'm going to pause for a second and look this up. So yeah, yeah so yeah, so so basic yeah, so the incoming is weird, like because you don't place yeah. the army FO spotter on the same card as the incoming marker. Right. So yeah, so basically what we're gonna place is a squad, and then we're gonna place a squad plus a leader on a separate card. So let's deal with the squad. Adjacent card. So let's deal with the squad first. Are they adjacent cards? That's what it doesn't know what it says, placement on adjacent cards. Oh, does it Not say that? Yeah, right. Oh, actually we um so we we don't use that yet. So basically if you look down here at the unit placement oh, instructions. That's right, that's right. Yep, 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 yep. yep. So All first right. things first is a squad. So first thing before we do that, we gotta draw a squad randomly because there's different levels of German squads. So there's a package of them here. So we draw one out, and you drew the uh, automatic fire version, so good. Well done. Yeah. Yep. So so now you draw so now you um Decide where he's going. Go where, yeah, where he's going. So draw one and on a, an eight. An eight. So an eight is left front at max line of sight. Left front. So that would be there. Yep, and right? that is max line of sight. Now let me go back real quick. I want to just check a couple of things. Defensive position. So we place volume of fire, but they are not spotted. So the question mark goes on. So the question mark goes on. And it doesn't say that they're undercover. So okay. let's sort of leave them like that. Now now we need to pull another squad. Now we need to pull another squad, yep. And a leader. And a leader. You just grab, they're all the same pretty much. Just grab one of the... the... They're all the same? I think, I mean, they have different like numbers just so you can tell. How do we clone them? No, just pull them. You can just pull them. Okay. It's fine. We're not going to end up with three leaders on the or four leaders on the board. So now where do they go? Where do they go? Right? Yep. So draw 10. Eight. Same. So we got to draw again exactly. because, because you cannot place them on the same hex or the same uh, card. Nine. Nine is right front at max line of sight. All right, this is cool. So now we extend the map. Now we extend the map. So go down to the, the terrain deck down here. Pull yeah, a card. Just grab one and pop it here. Put it right there. Exactly. So they're in a gully. And you can see they can't, if, if, this, if these had been white, we'd have drawn another one. 
Possibly. Actually, we probably wouldn't have because the the units probably doesn't have enough range to go that far. Max line of sight, though. Oh, that's a good point. At any rate, it doesn't matter. So they go here. And they are unspotted as well. Now, what's interesting about this hmm. is under normal circumstances, again, they would place fire. But their spotter is there. Spotters there. So I think, this is, I'm not 100% certain, but I don't think they're going to. But the thing is, once that spotter leaves, then they are, because they've got a spot. All hell's going to break loose. Yeah, all hell's going to probably break loose. <laughs> all right, so now... Now we got to check for this contact. Right? Yeah, and co the contact level hasn't gone up because they didn't place volume of fire. So we're still going to draw seven for him. There's three, four, five, so contact, six, and I guess it doesn't really matter since we're reshuffling. Exactly. Yeah, in this case, it really wouldn't have mattered because we're reshuffling. So we reshuffle and draw a D10 to find out what we get. Six. Six. So that's one down from what we got last time, right? Contact A, right? Strong point. That doesn't sound good at all. No, it doesn't. So we get a, squ oh, my a goodness. squad under trenches. And a squad plus an HMG team under a bunker. Oh, that sounds terrible. That does sound terrible. I'm glad this is game was. Uh, we're, this one's ending soon. <laughs> well, I think we're gonna come. We're gonna come back when I'm done and do a little bit more. Because, this up. Yeah, yeah, just I just agree. until just until we've gotten through enough of it that I feel like we've oh, seen. Oh no, I agree. Most... I agree. We got yep. So first things no. first, draw a squad. First squad. And he is under, automatic. under trenches. And now where do we put him? Nine. So I think that's max, that's right, line, right front, right, correct? So it's this guy. So he's there, right? He's there, yep. All right. Now, next we have a squad plus an HMG team. So there's an H in a bunker. In a bunker. Bunker is up here. Where are they? So Looking. right up, uh, way up at the top. They, oh, I see it. Yeah, the orange ones. And the reason they're a different color is that these don't count against the cover in the in the hex. Now, a couple of things, real quick. A couple of things on bunkers. Just if you look at the bunker counter. Yeah. So they're going to give a plus three. That's obvious, right? Yep. The four indicates how many units can fit in there. And you see the arrow? Yep. So the bunker can only fire in that direction. So one thing about bunkers is that they are possible to sort of like just get out of their way. Yep. All right. So now we draw for placement. Two. Two is per package placement table. So that is on adjacent cards. Okay. So we'll just put him on an adjacent card. Oh, that was the thing that I was looking at earlier? Yeah. Yeah. So he's just going to go adjacent to that guy, which luckily there's only, well, there's technically two options, but, I, you know, I feel like he goes here because he was triggered by this, right? <laughs> Maybe I should have drawn would, randomly. He would go in the hex where he could see. Right. I mean. Out of the bunker. Yeah. It's an interesting question. I was just thinking, it's an interesting question on bunkers because you wouldn't want to put him here because he wouldn't be fake. Oh, actually, sorry. If he had been placed here, I think then he gets kind of rotated. Is the thing so he can uh, fire? That makes sense. Yep. I'd have to go look that up, but that's kind of let's say that for now. Okay, so now and they they weren't spotted, right? Uh, I don't remember. Let's take a quick peek. Strong point spotted no. So that's not good. Okay, so now we actually get to do this for the first time. So we grab these PDF markers, which are primary direction of fire markers, and we basically put them here to indicate. 
where all this He's shooting at us. Yeah. In fact, they're both shooting at us. Oops. So that is what it looks like. We've got fire coming from two directions. Now, when you have fire coming from two directions, you get one of these crossfire markers. Okay. Just plop it in the hex. Just plop it in the hex. Now, one of the things is that most of the most of the modifiers in this game for volume of fire aren't cumulative. Crossfire sort of is cumulative, as is like grenades and concentrated fire. Okay. Um, so they get and that. Going back to what we talked about earlier, the the heavy machine gun is going to be the one that determines. Correct. The heavy. That's right. what I was just looking up. So the heavy machine gun is an A. So we grab an A, an automatic fire, uh, automatic weapons, which is there, and you just plop that on the hex. What are heavy weapons? So heavy weapon. Our machine guns are heavy weapons. Theirs, okay. theirs aren't. Got it. Okay. So just like what I like to tend to like to do because is just put um, sort of like because put it kind of up at the top so you can kind of yep. you, know, right. you kind of can associate it with those things. All right, so now we've got uh, we've got that. So and because now we've got two volume of fire markers, I'm pretty sure we go up to, yeah. Contact goes up to engaged. Engaged. Yep. So now we won't be drawing quite as many cards. Okay. So we have. So let's go back here. So we don't have any fire missions to update. Oh, sorry, we've already passed that. So now basically we go card by card and we 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 um we we uh, adjust this. Uh, we we sorry we check for the result. Right. Now one so thing real quickly while we're doing this, uh, I'll do most of this later, but I'm gonna put the, the heavy machine gun over here because he's gonna use an ammo. And tracking ammo is one of those things that they kind of say you can just ignore if you want. It's a complication, but I think it's I think it's useful. So, so now we well, let's and and you can really because all because of all of this is completely simultaneous. You can just do this in whatever order you want. Yep. So, so we, let's start over here. So we've got automatic weapons. You can see that gives you a minus one. Yeah. Uh, we get well, minus one for the minus one for the it's cumulative. Yeah, because it's cumulative. We've got minus two plus, for exposed. So minus four. Plus two, plus one. Yeah. So we got, we're at a minus one. All right. It'd be nice if we got our first not hit. Pinned. We did. Very good. Pinned. Actually, there wasn't a chance of getting hit on that card. There you go. Of course. That was pretty good. So he is pinned. Yep. Okay, so one of the things, um, and I'll just, this is worth, kind of, I'll point this out now. One of the things that, one of the key effects of pinned is you can see this volume of fire. So if all the units firing into a hex are pinned, you end up using this volume of fire. So your volume of fire goes way down. Okay. Right, but that's not happening here because he's not firing. And I assume when he's getting fired that he's not spotting them now. Nope, you still got to spot them. Still got to spot them. Yeah, so I mean, again, narratively, if you think about it, the entire front and front right has erupted with fire, but he hasn't yet figured out exactly where it's coming from. Yep. And then over here, we get a chance now. So we get plus zero, plus two for the card. So we're actually going to try to get him on a plus two. So this doesn't have as good a chance as I was hoping. But we did pin him. So that result is really good for us because if you remember, he's going to stop acting like a forward observer now and he's going to probably start skedaddling. All right. So that's every card with um, a volume of fire on it. So go ahead and hit that clean button. That'll end the turn. That was the third turn in this Fields of Fire teach and play. Uh, thank you very much for tuning into the video. If you're enjoying this series, it would be great if you could uh, comment, share, subscribe, like, do all the things that uh, help these videos get found on YouTube. And we'll be back with uh, turn four in the next video.